done. Thank you, Penny, for that lovely introduction. Hello to everybody. I've said hello to most, but I see that Lizzie's there. Hi, Lizzie. Hi, Trace. Nice to hey. see you. You're Hi, looking Liz. well. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. Great. Hi, Lydia. And Trish. Trish is there somewhere. And Lydia's just said hi. Okay, wonderful. All right, I'll just mute all while I have a little chat and then I will unmute all questions if that's okay. So, thank you so much, Penny, for inviting me on. It's great to be here, it's great to see your faces. I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Um, so what I'd like to talk about tonight is really the secret to success um, in the terms of taking action and how powerful actions can be um, and really understanding what actions you need to take and why people se seem to make it. You know, you see people succeeding and you think, why is it? Why are they succeeding? What is the difference between what they're doing and what, what I'm doing? So what I'm going to teach tonight is something that you could apply to absolutely everything. So tonight it's in the context of Jeunesse, um, but you could absolutely put this into practice for anything. So first step, if you want to write this down, is to get really, really clear on what you want. And that sounds really easy because you think, oh, you know, I want lots of things. But sometimes you really need to be honest with yourself about what you really want. So let's say, for example, that when you ask yourself that question in the context of our call tonight, you would like to be Ruby in Jeunesse. We'll use Ruby as an example because it's, you know, full-time income and it gives you a lot of choices once you're Ruby in Jeunesse. So if that was something that you wanted, for example, you would write that down, but you write it down in the present tense. So you write, I am a Ruby in Jeunesse. The next step is to ask yourself, am I willing to do what it takes to become a Ruby in Jeunesse? And to be able to answer that question, you need to know what it takes to be a Ruby. So for me, I got to Ruby in three years and the activities that I took to get to Ruby was I got very clear on my goal and I got excited about my goal and I took consistent action towards my goal on a consistent basis. Um, so it may not have been daily to begin with because I was working so much in my other business, but I thought about it every day. So it was front of mind. And this will also give you a clue of whether it's something that you really want and how important it is in your life. When you really want something, it's something that really occupies a lot of space in your mind because it is very, very important to you. And it's absolutely okay if something is or isn't important to you. It's your life. So it's really important for you to choose what's right for you. And, you know, you really just want to be honest with yourself about, you know, how far you want to go with anything that you choose to do. So... Everything's okay. Doing Jeunesse as a hobby is okay. Doing it to get to full-time income is okay. Doing it to get to life-changing income is okay. All of those things are fine. So once you know what it is that you want, then you can find out what it takes to get what you want and you can ask yourself, am I willing to do what it takes? So once you know that, then you schedule it in. So success is about what we do habitually rather than what we do every now and again. And absolutely, there are ups and downs in life. We always have challenges and life is in cycles, so we have good times and bad times. And when things are good and we're feeling good, then often we're more motivated to do things. And then when things are tough, then sometimes we're not motivated. Now, of course, there are absolutely real reasons why you're not going to be able to be active in your business. Lizzie, if you don't mind me using as an example, going through what you've been through recently is an absolute valid reason to put things aside. You know, you absolutely need to focus on healing, for example. My own personal example was when I was in hospital every day with my mum until she died, I didn't build my business in that time. I was in the hospital and I was present in the moment with my mum and I was blessed to be able to do that. 
So there are going to be times when you do put this aside, but I'm just talking about the everyday life that we lead, the little ups and downs, you know, the things that make us grumpy, not big life-changing events. So what you need to do is just develop rituals around getting yourself to the feeling that will allow you to take the action. So when you feel like you really believe that you can achieve your goal, it inspires you to take the action. So this is really interesting because often this will happen right after somebody joins your business. Somebody says yes and it's like, oh, I can do this. And then you're all inspired to reach out to more people because you've just shown yourself that you can do it. But after you've contacted 10 people and they've all said no, the voice in your head is like, I just suck at this and I can't do it. And you want to stop doing it. You want to stop taking those actions. So you can see what I'm saying here, that based on how you feel about your business, based on your belief in yourself that you can do it, is really dictating your behaviour. So I have struggled with all of these things. I'm not perfect. And I've felt all of these things. And what I've learned is that I've had to self-talk and go, yes, you've had a lot of no's, but remember, Penny joins your business. So, you know, if you can get someone like Penny to join your business, you can get other people to join your business. So it's just a conversation that you have with yourself to remind yourself of your successes. So I want you to congratulate yourself all the time for everything that you've ever done right because often we can spend too much of our time focusing on us not being good enough, you know, us not, you know, getting it right and just know that absolutely everybody gets no's all the time. So the habits that I have that are, that are kind of my rituals for the day are really setting the scene for the day for me. So it's getting me to a great vibration, frequency, emotion, whatever you like to call it, so that I can be productive and take the actions that I need to take to be successful, not just in Jeunesse, but in my other businesses, as a mum, as a friend, as a wife, all of those things, keeping my house clean. You know, there's lots of things that I you know, want to do well, and the energy that I have for those things is based on these rituals that I have that I start the day with. So for me, and you can choose your own, but what I always do as soon as I get out of bed is I exercise. Um, this has been proven to um, lift depression um, because of the endorphins that are released when you move your body. So I absolutely love walking. If the weather's good, it's down the beach with the dog. So there's a double whammy because pets make you feel good as well. Um, and at the same time, I'm listening to two different things. I'm listening to my affirmation statements, so my I am statements, the things that I want to be, you know, who I want to be. Um, at the moment, my favourite is I am loving, I am accepting, I am forgiving, I am blessing and I am grateful. So, you know, that's who I want to be and that's who I want to take into my day. But you can have lots of statements, you know, that really reflect what you want. I am in perfect health is always in there as well. And another one that I always say is I am helping others to be the best version of themselves because that's what brings me joy. So this is going to be unique to you and what's important to you if you want to have these statements. And then the other thing I do is I listen to inspiring um, personal development. So I spend about half the time on my walk listening to my own statements and half the time listening to something that really inspires me and reminds me how life works and how wonderful life is and how amazing it is that we can create the life that we want. Um, and then I sit down and write a gratitude list and then I write my list of things to do for the day, the most important things to do so that I have structure in my day rather than just being blown around like a leaf in the wind, just responding to the emails that come in, the phone calls that come in. And what that always includes for me is reaching out to new people to make new friends and following up the people who I've already connected with. Um, if we're at a stage where I've said, you know, if you want to look at this information, I'll send it through to you and I'll follow you up. So I have that all sort of diarised. So it's right there in front of me. The calendar is telling me who I'm due to speak to today. Um, but I always allow time for reaching out and connecting with new people. 
Um, I choose to develop a relationship with people before I invite them to have a look at the information. Um, and you can, you know, do this many different ways. Um, some people are able to talk straight away about, you know, what they're doing and, and would you like to have a look. Um, I sort of really just have a feel for it for when it comes up. But ultimately, once you're having a conversation with someone, they're eventually going to say, and what about you? What do you do? Um, and I absolutely don't leave it out. I completely tell them what I'm doing with Jeunesse and how much I love it. Um, and if they're interested in knowing about it, then I'll send them some information. But I just wanted to share that with you because um, sometimes people think that successful people are doing something extraordinary, but really we're doing very simple, ordinary things, but just consistently. Um, just doing them each day or however much time you have. So, you know, it might be three days a week for an hour or whatever it is, but you just don't let it drop. You just keep going and keep doing it. Um, and just, uh, I'm just very organised and disciplined about it. Um, and like I said, you can apply this to anything in your life. Choose what it is that you want, then decide whether you're willing to do what it takes find out what it is that you have to do, get good at doing it, and then do it consistently. But the, the feeling behind it and the belief in yourself is the secret. So, for example, um, there's a guy here in Adelaide who was ringing so many people, um, maybe 20 people a day, and getting no's and no's and no's and no's and no's. And that's because he didn't really believe that he could be successful in this business. Once he started to listen to Abraham Hicks was what did it for him, he changed his belief system, he actually started making less calls and now people are joining his business. So that knowing, that belief has to be attached to the action. It makes all the difference to the action that you take because people can hear your belief or they can hear your lack of belief. So if you're you know, feeling like you don't really believe in it on a particular day, it's not a good day to call people because they'll know. So it's really that knowing attached to, with, with the doing. Um, but I think the first step is to decide whether you really want it because you have to really want it so that you're actually going to be willing to do what it takes. If you're not sure, if you're on the fence, then you won't. And that's okay. And you can absolutely, you know, do this or anything just part-time and just for fun and just for certain things that you want. Um, but if you do want to get to the point where you earn some good income from this, then, you know, it's just making that decision that you really want to um, and then setting up some really simple routines. And it turns out to be fun. You know, it's like anything. Once you get good at it, once you practice it and you do it a lot, it is fun, it is enjoyable. And that comes across when you're talking to people as well. So that's just what I wanted to share, something very, very simple, something that you can, you know, just jot down some notes and and get on with it um, and actually do it. So I'll um, unmute you. In fact, what I might do is just get you to unmute yourself if anybody has any questions. So Tracy, I have a question. Yes. How do you get past the, how do you get past, okay, I'm grateful. I am grateful. I truly am grateful for, you know, I've had my bout with cancer in 2007 and I'm grateful for every day and I work in the health industry and I understand that and I'm okay with that. But how do you get past the fact that I want to get ahead and I do want to get to my next sapphire is where I'm wanting that my heading. How do I get past the fact that earning money is okay? okay. I, I, I'm not explaining it right, but I think you get I the dream. Yeah, I know what you mean. So um, you know, you've had a brush with maybe nearly death and now you're kind of like Yeah, okay. Enough is enough. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm grateful for the small things, but I want the bigger things. So how do I change my mindset? Yeah, that's a really good question. So what you're saying to me is that there is some guilt around wanting money because you're lucky to be alive. 
So part of you says, you know, I'm lucky to be alive. You know, I've got this perspective now that life is precious. So why would I want money? And there's some guilt around that. And a lot of us um, are actually taught that when we're young, no fault of anybody's, but, you know, the people around us were taught that as well, that money's evil and all that sort of thing. What I would really focus on is your why. So if you were to reach Sapphire, what I want you to do, and you don't need to share this now, but I want you to sit down afterwards and say to yourself, when I reach Sapphire, how will I feel? Now, I know for sure one of the things you'll feel is you'll feel really proud of yourself because you said you were going to do something and you did it. And that's a very valid reason for doing things. It's very valid to want to I say I'm going to do something and then follow through and you've shown yourself that you can do it. Another thing that when you get to the point where you're making money, because not all sapphires are making money, it really depends on the quality of people in your business, whether they're on auto ship, whether they're enrolling people as well. But once you get to the point where you're earning a certain amount of money and you decide what that is, ask yourself, what difference will that make to my life? So for example, for me, Reaching Ruby meant that my husband then believed in the business. That meant a lot to me. Because up until that time, and no fault of his own, because he wasn't in it like I was, he was very sceptical about me putting time into this. He was like, I'm not really sure about this, until I hit Ruby. And then he was like, oh, wow, and gave me flowers and gave me a card that said he was very proud of me. That was important to me. So these are the sort of things that I want you to think about. If you got to a certain level of income, what would that mean to you? What would that mean to the people who are close to you? How would that change your life? What decisions would you make? You know, if you had, for example, you know, a certain amount of money coming in, full-time income coming in from Jeunesse, would you keep working or wouldn't you? Whatever it is, I want you to think about what impact it would have on your life and I want you to see what that feels like because it's the feeling that you're going for. We do things because of the way it's going to make us feel rather than money. Money doesn't mean anything. Money is a word. You know, a, a note is just a piece of paper. A balance on a balance sheet is just numbers. None of that has any meaning whatsoever. It's the impact on who you are, how you feel about yourself, the time you have with people who are important, you know, holidays perhaps really get clear on that and what that would look like and that's mm. what you want to focus on because there's no guilt right. attached to that. You know that it's fair to be happy and have a free life where you can, you know, have some relaxation time and enjoy yourself. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That was good. You're welcome. Yeah. Money mm. is an energy, though, that we have to respect. Yeah, that's right. It's what we exchange. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, you attract money just like you attract everything else. But when, when you're trying to visualise having money, um, a dollar amount doesn't elicit any emotion or a picture of a pile of money well, doesn't make me feel anything. Whereas if you imagine the life you're going to live because of those changes, you know, relationships. For me, it's been about giving to more people. So Jeunesse has allowed me to have a wider audience and be able to, share my message that I believe strongly in, which is what we're talking about now, to more people. So that's one of the, the biggest outcomes for me. And Rank Advancing has given me um, more following in terms of having some credibility around sharing that information. And I feel very blessed that Jeunesse has been a platform for that for me. So everybody has a different reason, but that's you know, it's just what your driver is. What makes you feel amazing, you know? Think over the last few weeks, when did you last think, you know, what were you doing? What was it? And if you want to do more of that, is Jeunesse a platform that will help you do more of that? Yeah. But, you know, Lizzie, for you, for example, I know you've told me before that because of your experience with the products, a strong why for you was to share the products with other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but something I wanted to say was, um, uh, and it came from one of your other um, lectures through uh, Jay Fire, was actually getting my office into a space where I could perform. 
So sort of setting that up to have everything in place and um, to not be working on the kitchen bench like I am now, you know, to, to have the office just for that. That, that was an amazing... Uh, well, for me, it's like a lecture, you yeah. know. Um, it's a training uh, yeah. and I took to it and I just went and cleaned up the whole office and... And I love it. I, I had this new amazing office chair come into my life and I love it now. Yeah. So it's all set up for me just to work in. Yeah. And, and, I mean, it just completely changed the way you thought about your business time because now you're in an office running a business as opposed to sitting at the kitchen bench kind of playing around. You know, it just changes the way you think about it. Well, because at the kitchen bench, you can go off and do things in the kitchen and in the laundry and in the bedroom. And But when you actually set yourself, okay, I'm in the office now and I've set myself a time to be in the office, I'm going to be here. Yeah. It, it was just very productive yeah. to have uh, it, like an ind independent sort of clear space. Yeah. For what? I, I, I thank you for that, Tracy. You're welcome. Can I just add, um, Tracy? Yeah. One thing that I've learned from you as well, when you talk about this I am and the structure, I always have not felt really structured myself. Even as a young girl, I'm a fly of the seat, you know, oh, let's do this, and oh, I'm off here. You know, I married my husband who's very liberal, and I'm like this kite, and he's holding on to me as I go flipping off here, and... You know, I go in the morning, he puts his blink on and he, and he says, focus, Penny, because, you know, I look at the jewellery store and it's bling bling over there. And, and I, that's just a part of who I am, which I'm sure he loves as well. At the same time, the more that I'm doing a structured day, I also exercise, have for many years, and I write down my I am's. But one thing that Tracy shared with me was that little record, that app, that's that little recorder. I don't know oh. if you've downloaded that recorder. I do the same thing I because I think it's really powerful about what we think and sometimes you can let things seep in. So every time I spend, I have done this for many, many years, every time I spend I say money flows into my life and I'm never without money. I, I don't even care if it's 20 cents or you know, it's a credit card, whatever it is, but money flows into my life. And with this recording, I've recorded that visual of accepting my um, being a Ruby director and it's actually with quite a bit of emotion I don't I did it when I was away in Cairns and I was in the room and I just let it go and I, I even, I'm crying you know my voice is full of emotion as I look out on the crowd and I see all of you my beautiful team because it takes a team to get there and I just felt so choked up and then I looked over to the left and I saw my children and my husband and as I look at, as I listen to it, and I hear my emotion and my own voice, it takes me to that place of feeling that, of such joy that I get back from my walk and I just love doing my business. So I'm really grateful, Tracy, for that app. I just, it does a lot for me. And I just sometimes even put it in one ear while I'm cleaning or doing whatever, and without even realizing, it's in that subconscious. and. Gosh, I'm good when I listen to it. It's a, I'm a winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really shifts your emotion, you know, listening to those statements that make you feel like that. And it really increases your belief in your ability to do it. And that is what's going to attract the right people into your team um, and the success that you're looking for. It's good. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. I love it. Love it. Mm. Mm. You're welcome. So if anybody else has any questions... I know it's short and simple, but it is actually simple. <laughs> it's simple to say, not so simple to do. But um, if you don't already have some disciplines, what I suggest is that you add one at a time so that you're not overwhelmed. So rather than suddenly getting up and exercising, doing gratitude, listening to your affirmations, writing your to-do list, if you don't do any of those things, pick one and start with one. And once one of them is truly ingrained into your morning habit, then add one and just gradually build on it. Um, meditation is another one that you can have in there. So all of those things 
pick one that's really feeling like the best one for you right now and then you can build on it. But ultimately, your results come from the action you take. You can think and you can listen and you can be as grateful as you like, but if you don't actually take the action, nothing will happen. Um, so it is the action and you can build on that as well. You know, if you're not calling at all at the moment, you could just start by using my method of connecting with five new people through Facebook or LinkedIn each day. And once they respond to you, sending them a message, you know, look at their page, find out who they're about and get to know them. If you met someone at a party, you would naturally say, you know, how do you know so-and-so, whoever it is that invited you to the party? You know, do you live around here? Do your kids go to the local school? It's just a natural way to build a relationship and get to know them when they ask about you, share. And if you feel a connection, say, hey, I'd love to jump on the phone and just go from texting, messaging to the phone call. I remember the first time I said that and I felt nervous. My voice didn't come across as nervous, but I did feel nervous saying, you know, and I wasn't even, I, it wasn't my voice because I was texting it. I was like, would you like to jump on the call? And I was like, waiting for the response. <laughs> Hope they don't think I'm a weirdo. <laughs> Hope they don't think I want to go out with them. Oh, maybe you go. Yeah, exactly. Hope they don't think I'm stalking them. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and it came back, yeah, that'd be great. Oh, oh. And then I was like, phew. And then I was like, oh, no, I have to call them. <laughs> so I went through that fear. And I was like, great how's tomorrow you know and booked it in and all of that made it more comfortable because they were expecting the call um and you know they knew it was just to develop the relationship and just to chat so we both had time and and i've just developed the routine of doing that and i love it no matter what happens i love doing it you know it it just flows naturally sometimes we just get off the phone and we're friends sometimes they've asked me to send information sometimes they've told me it's not for them um, but they'll think if they know of anybody who this might be for. But we definitely are friends at the end of it. You know, I'm not offended. It's like, can't believe you don't want to hear about my business. You know, it's not like that. So you can't lose at all. You're Tracy, actually just developing friendships. Tracy, with the calls, you know, and ultimately you're getting them off onto the phone to you. So you're just... I guess that form and you're just asking them questions about them until the right moment happens when they ask you and then you tell them about what you're doing. Is that how you flow on yeah, the Yeah, so a phone call for me is more listening than talking. So I'm genuinely listening. I always want to help in some way. So I'm listening and I've always been like this. So no matter who I talk to, I'm listening to what their problem is. Um, and Jeunesse may be the solution, but Jeunesse may not be either. So, you know, so when I'm listening to someone, so for example, when I had coffee with someone today, what I realised was she needs um, admin support um, because she's actually really stressed by the admin she's doing and it's getting in the way of her business. So I ended up recommending somebody for admin support. But when you really listen to somebody, you'll hear what their problem is. And then when it is your time to talk about you, you'll talk in a way that will relate to what you understand to be their problem. People want people to hear them and understand them. You know, that's where relationships mm -hmm. build. So my goal is never when I call someone to enrol them into Jeunesse. That's not why I ring them. Oh, no, because I actually feel quite contrived when I lead from that you know, because I, like you, Tracy, I love meeting people and I, I'm a natural um, attracted to other people because yeah. I'm friends and I, I love the joy in other people. But if I have Jeunesse in my mind, I feel like I'm contriving things to make it into a Jeunesse contact. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes I am. Um, and um, I don't know where the balance is with that. What I would say to you, that's such a good comment and question to ask, Lizzie, is that because obviously I'm training you to do this and I'm training you how to do Jeunesse, <laughs> but what I do is I actually genuinely say to myself in the morning, you know, who, will be, who can I help today? But I don't qualify it by who can I help with Jeunesse today? I just set out to help people and I have no idea how I'm going to help them. And, and maybe the only way I've helped them is by being kind to them. 
you know, I don't have a solution to their problem, but I have listened and I have been kind. So my goal is just to help people, as many as I can per day. And because I set out with that outset, but I also have a goal in Jeunesse, a proportion of people are just interested in Jeunesse. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. But I'm not attached to the individual outcomes. So the real secret is have the goal, but when you take the actions, don't have an attachment to the outcome of the action that you take. Know that there's a bigger power than you that's got that sorted for you. You can just relax about that. If you just take the action with your eye on the goal and you take it consistently with belief that you can reach that goal and then set out to help people, they will be natural conversations. It won't feel like there's any pressure or any sales. I even joke sometimes when I ask someone to get on the call, don't worry, I'm not going to sell you anything. <laughs> Surely that's the first thing that pops in someone's mind. Like, why does a stranger want to talk to me on the phone? Maybe she's going to sell me something. And I say, honestly, don't worry, I'm not going to sell you anything. And sometimes the very person that I've said, don't worry, I'm not going to sell you anything, by the end of the conversation, they're saying, oh, I'd really like to know more about the products. Can you send me some information? <laughs> and I do sell them something. <laughs> yeah. but it certainly wasn't the intention of the call. It's just in the end when they ask what I do, I don't hide it. You know, this is what I do. I'm not embarrassed about it. Yeah. So, you know, it's just really setting the goal, knowing that you can reach it, and then consistently taking those actions. And you'll enjoy it. If you do it consistently, it'll just become fun. But I think mm -hmm. it's a really good point for you to make, Lizzie, is you've got to be really coming in honestly to, for the purpose of connecting with somebody, making that connection, and being just open to where it goes. So how can I help? Yeah. Yeah. That's my mantra. How many people can I help today? Who can I help? And today on my last session of Thinking Into Results for my group, they had session 12 today, I said to them, because a couple of people, you know, had got a little bit bogged down in some negative thinking, I said, if you're getting in the negative thinking trap, stop and go, who can I help? And yeah. just put your attention on someone else and bang, you'll get yourself out of it. Forget about yourself for a moment. You know, reach out to a friend. Who's, you know, who told me last week that they're having a problem? Ring them, you know, and just help somebody else. Um, what mm -hmm. happens to me whenever I do that is I bing, someone says, oh, can you do a three-way call with me? Oh, can I ask you a question? Yes, you can. Thank you very much. That's just what I want to do. I want to help someone. So, you know, there's, that's going to make you feel good. So it is a good way to spend your day. Fantastic. Thank you, Tracy. My pleasure. Lovely to see you all. Thank you for the great yeah. questions. Thank um, you, Tracy. That was lovely. I'm um, good. I'm glad you liked it and we've recorded it. So, Gloria, who's just hopped on, you'll be able to watch the recording. Nice to see you, Gloria. Um, and Lydia and Trish were there in the background somewhere. Do you want to close, Penny? Thanks. Yes, I will. I will. Just want to say thanks so much. You know, every time we get on and connect, I, I love it. I love seeing you all, but I'm really grateful tonight to you, Tracy, for coming on. I, you know, I've heard these things and every time there's sort of like another layer that comes of understanding. So I find it absolutely fantastic. Love you to bits. And thanks everyone for being on. It's just really awesome. Great. I can't wait to send this out. Thanks, Tracy. Pleasure. See you later, everyone.